Well, hello, this is Joe at iRepair Electronics, and working on the Emerson radio uh, right now, and um, found something curious with the capacitors that I've got here. Um, these are bypass caps. This is a, an older style, uh, you might refer to it as a bumblebee, uh, not not really because it doesn't have all the multiple color bands on it. Um, here's the orange drop mica, much nicer. But here's something curious about this one. There's no indicator on it, if you notice. You can bring this closer and get it in focus. Focus, you bastard. There we are. So, do you see an indicator? I don't. So, now there's a metal foil on one side that is going to want to go to ground, or you'd want to install it that way, so that you minimize any hum, noise inside whatever part of the circuit this happens to be going into. So, they just didn't do it on this one. Um, here's another orange dip. And it seems to have its uh, band showing. Okay. That's a sprague. Um, this brand, not really sure who the manufacturer is. There's a logo, but I don't know who that is. So anyway, let's test these out. We're going to put them on the scope. And the way we're going to test and verify these have their bands properly set up is by having the scope sensitivity way up. Normal time base around 60 hertz or so. And we're going to just... Put the ground clip on one side, put the uh, positive lead on the other. Now here, what we do is grab the body and look at the deflection. If the deflection, let's bring it up but a little more. Okay, so we're getting a little bit of deflection here when I touch it. See that? So when I reverse polarity, let's see how it looks. Okay, so actually, this is normal polarity, I was mistaken. So the ground lead is here with the band, positive lead is over here. So now it's really minimized. There's very little noise. You know, me touching it has a little bit of influence on it. Not much. If we go the other way again, we'll see that when I grab it, yeah, there's definitely a little bit of uh, induction from me touching the thing. So this is indicated correctly. Let's find out what's happening here. Since we don't know, <laughs> we're just gonna have to find out. Okay, so we have a good amount of induction here. I'm tempted to think that the, pos the negative side might be over to our right here. Let's try it out. So, hmm. All right, one more time. Hmm. Is that 
actually pretty close to hard one to call this one probe leads on there better hmm okay well that's a fail <laughs> let's try it on this one So this is an old, old one out of a radio, many, many moons ago, and not having much influence here, and the ground is on this side, here's the band, uh, let's try it the other way. Okay, so... That's definitely more influence that way, and yet the band, the ground, is over here indicating that this is where the band should be. Uh, but I'm getting more influence this way than the other way. See that? Let's do it again. Yeah, there's almost no influence there. So this is banded incorrectly. And it didn't take me long to find this, did it? It was just some random pile of caps, and uh, there it is. So what I should do is get uh, maybe some crayon uh, something to uh, indicate this. Um, this is, this cap is usable. I've uh, measured it before I uh, did the video. And um, so it, it's usable. It just, you wouldn't want to put it in incorrectly. So there it is. It's a very quick and easy way of identifying whether or not your capacitors are marked incorrectly. So, um, if you've got a little junk bin somewhere like me that looks like this and there's a lot of caps in there and they could be could be 50 50 could be 70 30 you never know uh, but right before you install it you might want to know for yourself if uh, if it's printed incorrectly and this is a case where it is so that's it. Just wanted to show you, share that with you. So this has been Joe from Hardware Electronics. Have a good day.